Okay. Okay. Hi, fam, fam. So this is Stephanie Steven. I'm back with another video. As you can see from the title, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna talk about that, but I'm not gonna go into details of who he is, who he is to our family members, and who he is to me, and uh, things like that. So let's get to the video. So first of all, how, how I deal with it, I guess how I dealt with it back then and how I deal with it. Um, so it happened in 2016, three years ago. Yeah, I was 22 at that time. And that's that. I'm not gonna go into details. I have to be careful of what I say because I don't want to tell people who he is and things like that. I, I really don't. That's not the purpose of this video because I still do have respect towards his family and my family. I mean, technically his family is my family as well. I really don't want to make it Okay, that's that. So let's get to the video. It made me, it made me who I am today, basically. I do not trust people that easily. And normally, what people don't understand and what people don't realize that sexually harass, uh, sexual harassment normally, comes into your life normally happens within your own family members and I know I'm not the only one it's just that it's definitely not easy to talk about and you have to be careful when you talk about it because yet again they are your family Okay, oh Jesus. Um, so after it happened to me, I waited until he left my house. Um, the next day I told my brother, but then I even contemplated to even not tell my parents. It made me feel as though I was breaking the family apart. You know, if you know what I mean? So at first, I did not want to tell my parents because of that. We were very close, indeed. Um, but nonetheless, I had to tell my parents. So it took me two days to tell my parents, two days after to tell my parents. I learned not to even trust my own family member after that. I know that is sad, but sometimes you really have to be careful of who you trust, who you trust in your life. I'm not saying not to trust your parents, but if you trust your parents, that's great. You have to tell them what happened. You have to tell them everything basically if it's disturbing you have to tell them because it's either your mental health when you suffer in silence or they win if you know what I mean and oh jeez oh. so what I'm trying to say is that be careful And always, always support your child if this happened to them or if they are experiencing it. Please, please, please support your child. But if 
girls, if you girls out there have no choice because nobody is listening to you within your own family members, then you really have to take it to the authority. You really have to tell the authority, tell the police, tell whoever if you feel unsafe, if you feel threatened in any way, please do seek help somewhere else. Okay, so first of all, I would like to say that this video is not for you to be sympathetic to me, towards me, and things like that. I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm just trying to tell you guys. I'm just trying to voice out because I know I'm not alone. And you really have to tell someone. So that is rule number one of how I dealt with it and yeah so first of all I guess it was my mistake to trust him with all my life I guess it was our mistake to trust somebody even though they are your relatives and things like that. I don't know what to say, dude. Since he was like my brother, how can I not trust him? First of all, if you are experiencing any way of sexual harassment or sexual assault and things like that, please do tell the people you trust please tell someone and if they're not helping you if they put you off and shut you down go to the authorities talk to the police or any any organizations out there that focuses on this kind of issue in your country so I decided to tell my parents because it's either I suffer silently and make my mental health deteriorate or I tell the people I trust with all my life and seek comfort from that I was relieved when I tell my parents even though I do feel a little bit guilty because that kind of made the families it made our family kind of I, I can't really say separated but um, things got awkward between us all. And that is fact. All I know is that karma will bite him in the ass one day. And that's all I can do. But I make the, but I wanna make this video just to tell you guys that you are not alone and if it is happening to you or if it happened to you please don't don't suffer in silence because you're gonna ruin yourself more than already is and please it's not your fault it is never your fault don't think that it is your fault it's not to me, even though it happened like three years ago, it's just, it just feels like it happened recently, forever, I guess. I will never forget about it. You can't really forget about it, this kind of thing, um, especially when they are so close to you. They're not strangers. Sometimes I wish that it happened Sometimes I wish that I was harassed by a stranger instead of a family member. Another way for me to deal with it now for the sake of my 
mental health, I guess. I never wanted to see him again. We never want to see him again. It just... It's better that way. We cut ties with him directly, indefinitely. Just him. This has nothing to do with his family members. It's just him. Try your best to avoid him and that is also the reason why I had to tell my parents because if not he would just come over to our house like pretend it's pretend nothing happened and I can't do that I guess he got he tried his luck with the wrong person I, I don't know I'm very vocal as you guys know I'm like an open book. I I just tell people how I feel. Since this is a public video on YouTube, I'm not gonna tell anyone who he is out of respect. For his family, not him. To me, I have no problem with treating his other family members like normal. Like nothing happened but it is easier said than done so I've never seen them again since 2016 I can't imagine what would happen if I accidentally meet them I can't and another way for you to kind of avoid feeling like this, kind of avoid having flash flashbacks is to actually avoid TV shows or movies with sexual harassments in them or any sexual predators. I made a mistake by watching the second season of 13 Reasons Why. Where it got me feeling disappointed, anxious, depressed, disgusted, and angry. Um, so yeah, avoid watching those kind of TV shows. It just fucks you up. Bally. Whenever I get flashbacks of what happened, I tend to talk about it with my parents. Even now and then. I tend to talk about it with my parents, my brother, or my boyfriend, or my friends, depending on how bad I feel mentally. On some days, I can get through it by myself. I would just brush it, brush it off, and stop thinking about it. On some days, I'm stronger, some days I'm not. So that is. So that is that. Please, please, I can't stress it enough. Talk to somebody you trust with all your life. Talk to them, tell them what happened. And trust me, when you tell someone, you feel like... You feel relieved. You feel like that big weight just got lifted. You're gonna ruin yourself more than you're ruining anybody else. More than you're ruining that, that asshole who ruined your life and if you suffer in silence, he just probably keeps on doing it and I don't want that I really hope that he is not doing that to any other people to any other girls but yeah that's what I'm trying to say 
tell people so that probably they would stop doing it probably they would stop harassing us sexually and things like that he has no heart basically can't even imagine why would you do that to your own sibling why would you do that to your own you know family members the one that you grew up with can't imagine what we what he would do to other people to other people that are not his family member it's just crazy to think about so please don't suffer in silence because you can help a lot of people by putting your voice out there and that's it for this video really hope you guys learned something from this video um, and that's that see you guys next week